getting back into this study. Uh, tonight we're actually, I guess, it depends on how you look at it. Uh, <clears throat> tonight the, the, the big show starts, <laughs> if you'll have it. The, uh, the church age is ended. Uh, John's described what he, the throne room uh, and what he saw in it and what was going on there uh, in uh, chapters 4 and, and chapters 5. And uh, then the, the seal is opened by the Lamb and uh, what's going on. And you have, your, you have your outline or you have your manuscript tonight and it's rather wordy. Uh, tonight because I got to talking too much and I cut about a page and a half out of it and it's still too wordy but anyhow you can if you get bored listening to me you can read along so I'm going to be following basically pretty much along with it uh, we saw in the last uh, in the last chapter praise this praise erupting all over everywhere and everything because the lamb was worthy to open the seal and uh, uh it's interesting to me, there's so many things about this opening up of the seal in the beginning. Now, depending on who you ask, at our uh, uh, early morning Bible study and Bible conference, Monday morning, Brother Charles and I had an in-depth Bible conference. I like to never got it straightened out. And uh, we talked about this, and some people think that... Uh, these seals, uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with this, that all four of these horsemen are already riding. Uh, some people say that the four horsemen of the apocalypse uh, are already abroad and have been uh, since the beginning of the end, which was uh, at Pentecost, the beginning of the end was at the rapture of the church. That's the end of the age, the church age, uh, the start of the uh, the, the start of the church age, which is the last days. So we're in those last days. So some people say that the, that the horse, the, the white horse of war uh, is, is riding. Some people say that uh, the, under the second seal is, uh, is the red horse that comes out uh, that takes peace from the earth. So war, wars and rumors of wars that are going on, people killing one another. And then the, the third horse of the apocalypse, the black horse. Of course, who hadn't seen the the movie, The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, or, or some of the takeoffs on that that's been... And then famine. And uh, we've experienced that even today. There are countries abroad that are experiencing famine people. Where was it I was... Uh, I heard uh, just uh, this week that... Uh, oh, in some of the countries, some of the uh, villages in Syria, yeah. uh, people are starving to death because they're, they're in the grip of war. And uh, the uh, rebels are holding the cities, and uh, Assad's forces are surrounded, and they've cut off all help in and out. And uh, the United Nations or some of them were carrying, or uh, Salvation Army, somebody's carrying food into them this week because I believe I heard that uh, in the teens or something other died in one of the cities, just starved to death this month. <clears throat> it's hard to imagine, but <clears throat> that horse certainly is riding. And then the fourth horse, which is. Uh, uh, the pale horse, or the pale green horse. <clears throat> uh, and there's some allusion to that. I was talking in the deacons meeting last night. There's some allusion to that being associated with ISIS uh, and uh, uh, Islam, but the pale green color that you see so prominent in them and in their buildings and, and uh, clothing and things that they do. So it's interesting to note, and, and I don't know that it's that it would be a misappropriation of scripture to say that these horses are riding, uh, these uh, uh, messengers are out and brought over the earth even today. But in my opinion, they have a much greater significance uh, in the future as we get toward the end of time uh, and the rapture of the church and so on and so forth. So. With that thought in mind, uh, and those words, are there, are, any, are there any comments or anything? I know many of you study and prepare for these lessons ahead of time, so you have uh, some thoughts as well. Does anyone have any thoughts that you'd like to share about uh, the sealed book, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, 
the four beasts that's going to open the books or anything else before we start. So, anyone have anything tonight you'd like to share before we start? Good to go? Y'all awake? Yes. Somebody yes. shake Rose. No, she's all right. Okay. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Verse 1 and 2. A lengthy text tonight. Uh, just those first two verses as we introduce this opening. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. <clears throat> and I saw him behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth and went forth conquering and to conquer. Now let's be reminded, uh, let me remind you of a few of the things that I've asked you to do when we started this study. Uh, as we read these scriptures and, and we try to determine who these personages are and what they're doing and, and how it relates, even as we try to make it relate to our, to our times now, how we're doing, uh, remember that let's just read it and let's see, let it say what it says. And uh, uh, forget our inhibitions or our preconceived ideas even for that matter, especially about praise. If God just blesses you hard on some of this stuff as we're going through there, just don't hesitate to give the Lord the praise that he so uh, justly deserves. And let's let the book speak for itself. It is the word of God written by the Holy Spirit Amen. of God as he inspired the pen of John to write the things that he saw. And of course we want to keep the things that are written in because there's a blessing that's attached to them. And remember that it is a continuing drawing, not necessarily chronological all the time, uh, but it's something that's that's ongoing. Now, let me ask you this: Is there anyone here? Is there anyone here in our group tonight that doesn't hold the opinion that this is still future? Is there anyone that thinks that this is already passed or this has been fulfilled? Any of you that thinks uh, this took place in the Book of Revelation took place at the fall of Jerusalem in 70 A.D. Or under Antiochus Epiphius or whatever, and uh, okay, Brother Charles does some of it to some degree, uh, because some of it's already some of history. You can you can identify part of these events with historical events, and uh, that's not an uncommon uh, belief in some uh, academic circles, biblically academic circles, uh, that some of these things have already passed. Uh, how many of you? Is there anyone that doesn't believe? Uh, that the rapture of the church is yet future. Okay, good. We're all good on that. I hate to call you out and tell you it's wrong, but anyhow, uh, well, the rapture of the church is yet. It hadn't happened yet. Yet. Uh, because I'm still here, uh, and I was born here, and uh, there's still evil here, and there's still the Holy Spirit working here. So he that holds, he that holds, will hold until he is taken out of the way, and he's not been taken out of the way yet. So uh, the Holy Spirit's still here. So the rapture church has not taken place yet. So we're pre-rapture now in the age that we're living in. And uh, salvation is still available to those uh, that will be saved. So uh, this actually begins. Now when this seal breaks open, this actually begins uh, the, continue, the, the, the uh, drama of the tribulation here on earth. And, and once it starts, it doesn't end until Revelation chapter 20 verse 15 before uh, this tribulation period uh, ends. So when this seal is broken, what is, uh, what is declared in heaven begins to be played out here on earth. Now, as far as, as, far as John's physical location is concerned, John's in heaven, yeah, right. either physically or in his vision. Either way, he was called up hither. Mm -hmm. And he went up and, and he described what he saw and he's watching in heaven now, and we'll find if we if we pay attention as we go through the study, we'll find that through the the uh, uh, manifestation of this uh, drama, this future drama that's going to take place, we see John changing locations occasionally. It's going to be interesting. Let's try to you try to remind me as as these events come up to to point out when John moves from heaven to earth or or where he's going to be because he's in different places. And, uh, and try to bear in mind, if you will, as we go through this thing, where we are as these things take place now. Where are we now as this seal is open? Where are we? We're in heaven. We're, in heaven. we're around the throne. We're, we're there with Christ. The rapture's taking place. Uh, we're there in heaven. We're around the throne or in that area. So we see what John saw. I like that song. 
uh, tell me more, John. Tell me more. Uh, things that you saw. So we get to see what John saw. So John's writing down the future for us. This is the newspaper from the day after the. Uh, this is the heavenly newspaper from the day after the rapture takes place. Is that right? Possibly, possibly not. So we'll talk about that just a little bit more. But anyhow, it'll be taking place. So we're in heaven. John's in heaven. Lamb's got the book. First seal, the first seal is broken. This is a continuation of that initial vision of the throne room. And, and John uh, saw what he saw. Uh, and, but the spiritual significance is there as well. So as we begin, the word of the Lamb opens the seal. And uh, it begins to happen on earth. Uh, what it, it is. And now what it's speaking about, verse 1 it says, and, and one of the four beasts says, says with, a, with a voice of thunder, come and see. Now, uh, why do you suppose there's the voice of thunder? Why, why such a loud, and we talked about, as we, got, as we were coming up to here, we were talking about the significance of thunder, didn't we? Now why do you think there's thunder? What does thunder do? Get your it gets your attention, yeah. When it thunders real loud, my wife's here, you know, like that. And some of the rest of you do, I can see, you know. And, uh, and, and it gets your attention. So it's obvious that, that when this thunder sounds, God wants everyone to pay attention to what's getting ready to take place. Uh, it's like when, uh, now when I'm preaching, you can, you can text or diddle or doodle or doddle or nod or whatever you want to do. And, and I can't say, boy. <laughs> but now my daddy, when he spoke, boy, <laughs> you better pay attention. You know, pay attention to what I'm telling you. And I think that's what God's doing here. Yeah, sure. You know, I want you all to look at what's getting ready to happen or what's happening or what's going to happen, what's going to be happening here. So, yes, God. I think of this. It said I saw. So we have an eyewitness here. John. Huh. Saw. That's good. John saw. But then when he said he heard, I like to think of that as a calamity that's coming upon this earth. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay. John saw. And then he tells us what it's going to be on the food that food. He heard and he saw. And then he told. And then he and then he's telling us. Okay, that's good. Anybody else? Okay. Now, one of, the, one of the four beasts, and the beast number one, the beast that's interesting, we, we discovered back in, uh, back in uh, verse, uh, chapter, chapter four, that the beast, the first beast, had a verse, uh, chapter four, verse seven, the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast was like a calf, you know, like to eat more chicken people. <laughs> There's a, uh, a Guernsey carrying a sign, eat more chicken. And, uh, and then the third beast was like a man. Okay? And uh, then the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. So, uh, for whatever reason, the first beast is identified as the one that calls forth that first uh, horse and horseman. And it's the beast that, and it said the, the first beast. And we know what the first beast looks like, don't we? Yeah. It looks like a lion. Now, I don't know, have either one of you preachers uh, have a, a done any studies that, that is, as to why the lion was the one that was first and why it called forth the, have, the, the... Has anyone seen any significant spiritual or biblical correlation between the beast and the horses that they call out? I haven't either. Okay. But anyhow, with that being needless... The, the line, the first beast, which is like a lion, is the one that calls out. And, and he says, I heard, like Pastor Don says, and, and then I saw. And he said, come and see, and John says in verse 2, then, that I saw. So these beasts, if you'll notice in chapter 4, uh, all their activity, everything that they do, brings honor and glory to God. It says, that without day, and, day or night, they cease not saying praise God and giving him praise and honor and glory. So to me, that's significant because if the beast's purpose is to bring honor and glory to God, then the riding of these horsemen is to bring honor and glory to God as well. Now, how, how, could, how could judgment coming on the earth bring honor and glory to God? Well, 
Okay, Ron. Go ahead. That's all. Right. I'm, I'm, hey, I'm in the heart. I'm, I'm good. I'm here till seven thirty. What, 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 what are you thinking? I, I know what you're thinking. What am I thinking? Well, all, all for forever. Wickedness has been dominant on this earth. And God's. How many prayers have you prayed? How many prayers have you prayed for God to remove a sickness from a loved one, or a tribulation, or a trial, or trouble, or a uh, from somebody that you love, or from your own self, or your own situation, or or the kids that are starving to death around the world. How many times have you prayed for God to feed those kids? I mean, the evil that's on this earth. You know, and when God begins to get rid of this evil, don't you know that's going to be? He's been patient for over six thousand years. Patient. Right. But finally, God says, "Enough's enough. Right. I'm done. I'm done." You know, I complain uh, all the time about things that's going on. Mm -hmm. I listened last night. Please, let's not get into politics. Mm -hmm. But I listened last night. I couldn't listen. Uh, well, I, I didn't. I turned over and watched uh, uh, Free Suit. <laughs> 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 Oh, okay. Moving right along. Anyway, anyway, I, I We're not getting into politics, okay? Right. And, uh, Better to watch three than one. Anyway. What, what we had to do in what? Eight years, why hasn't it been done? Eight years. Now, I don't think God put in an office, but I think God allowed it to happen. Right. Bring America to her knees. We we hate it that yeah. way. We fixed to see these horses uh, take place. Right out in this country. Exactly. They've been riding in other countries. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 I agree. I mean, you can't. Hear. So when God says enough's enough, and God begins to answer those prayers of the yeah. people that have been praying for hundreds of years, thousands of years. It's going to bring honor and glory. You talk about you talk about people praising God. You can understand now why in heaven there's a rejoicing and a praising going on when God begins to bring judgment on Satan and all the things that he's brought and caused on this earth and the things, you know, uh, that, that's happened on earth. I mean, the unsolved crimes that are, think about it, if nothing else, Jack the Ripper, Jack the Ripper in London, you know, never was solved. We have a multitude of unsolved, unsolved murders right here in Mecklenburg County. This, this, there has to be there has to be judgment and justice Amen. and when everyone sees that God's about to settle all the scores that need to be settled Amen. praise his name Amen. I mean it ain't fair what Hitler did to the Jews it's not fair what Stalin did it's not what not fair what that little fat pudgy stupid dictator North Korea is doing to his people right. today none of that's fair it has to be settled that's right someday. And that's when we'll start praising God when that mess is brought to completion in God. That's what brings praise in my opinion. That's why there's praise and honor and glory. So these these beasts are, uh, if you'll have it, these beasts are uh, mashing the enter button of God's judgment on the system to let it go ahead and open up and start. <coughs> The Antichrist. I think. Okay, you think it's Antichrist? Yes. In the, the, in, in the uh, sixth chapter here, the White Horse Bride Fair. Uh huh. For everything that God has, the devil has a substitute. Counterfeit. Counterfeit. Yep. And so this, I think, now, you, you might think different, all right, but I think this is the Antichrist right now. Mm -hmm. Because uh, his crown is, is given unto him. Mm -hmm. by the kings of the earth and the authorities of the earth. But in the 19th chapter, verse 11, we see the church then come back with Christ mm -hmm. upon a white horse. Mm -hmm. That is Christ. Mm -hmm. I think this is, and, it, and if anybody did it, I like to, I'm, I'm, I'm open for suggestions. But I think this is the end of Christ. The white horse is right there. Anybody dare differ with Brother Don? <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody agree with too? Two. 
Yeah, two to none, we're, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you may. He used to speak words on it. I don't know if you probably read that too. And he read that to me. Knew all that. Just kidding. And uh, <laughs> they said the same theologians believe that way too. Many theologians do. Uh, many theologians believe that this is Christ because because it's a white horse. Righteousness. I made note of this in your notes. Uh, because of uh, the crown, the stephos uh, that's on his head. Uh, because of the bow, and the psalmist in the Old Testament minor prophets speak of Christ's bow of judgment, you know, but almost always when it speaks of Christ's bow in the Old Testament, it always speaks with his arrows of judgment as well. Right. This, this one doesn't have any arrows, right. you know. So, but, you that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there are those that believe that this is Christ. And, and you have... But but the problem with that being with it being Christ is this, and and it's good that you brought that. But the problem with it being Christ is the fact that Christ is holding the book yeah. and is opening the seal. Yeah, but but you have to realize that we're speaking in symbolism and metaphors here as well. I mean, it's not a real lamb, but the Bible says it was a lamb as though it had been slain. And we know that Christ is called what, the Lamb of God. So it's speaking of Christ, but John says, I saw a lamb. That is so cut. Looks like yep. it being killed, you know. Uh, so it's possible, and the ones that, that contend that it's Christ, and there's some very reliable theologians, not as reliable as me and Pastor Don, but they're reliable <laughs> theologians nonetheless, you know. That believe that this is Christ. Matthew Henry commentary says it's Christ. Well, he's post millennial anyhow. Yeah, you can't believe it. <laughs> but, anyway, but I've got him on my tablet. But he says it's Christ. Uh, simply because I got his book for free. Well, uh, here, when he comes, he don't have his crown. Uh, the crowns are given to him. For yeah. His power. And I think that uh, the, uh, the crowns are given to him by the authorities that is in the world this time. But in uh, the 19th chapter, uh, in verse 11, when he comes, he has his crown. Comes out of heaven he has his with crown. his crown and the multitude is the host of heaven behind him on a white, on a white horse. Yeah, right. That's the first time, that's the first time, 1911, is the first time that, that we know specifically that Christ is identified as coming out of heaven, as riding on a white horse with the Adamas and Stephos both on his head. The turbines, our crowns, as well as his crowns, the crown of Christ, the crown of life. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. All of you are right on target. I agree. And coming up. What else? So then, those who contend that it's Christ, they, they've got some ground to stand on, but it's a little shaky. It's kind of like those that believe you can lose your salvation. You have some ground to stand on, but it's a little shaky, you know. My opinion, yes, yeah, biblical ground by by interpretation. So, uh, uh, the, the the issue I think was, you know, who 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 is the writer, and I think we've now. Uh, how many of you think? How many of you think it, that it is Christ? And that's all right if you do. How many of you think it's Antichrist? How many of you don't think? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got more hands any, on the hat than you do. You get any more books like that? Hey, you got three more. Two more, yeah. You're, we're making progress. Let's go at it again, brother. Let's do it. I did that one time on offer, and we had to have $15,000, and I passed the plate, and we didn't get enough. So we, I, we, I told the girls, I said, or the men, I said, count it. So they counted it. We didn't get so we passed it again. We passed it three times, but we got it, didn't we? We locked the doors, and we kept passing the plate. And we went out, and we just kept everybody in, and we got it. Three days later, we finally got it. Okay. Uh, and we wouldn't let him go to the bathroom either. I mean, people will get your pocket money. I'm just kidding. Okay. So, we have, we have the rider coming out in white, on a white horse. Has a, now, Brother Don says that, Brother Don says that, that uh, and basically all this verbiage that y'all are talking about, I've written in this paper here. 
But uh, he says that the crowns are given to him. Now, how does this take place? What happens? How, how are the crowns given to him? Now, if it's Christ, when are the crowns given to Christ? When? Well, we we lay them down at the at the end of time. Yeah, at, at the judgment seat of Christ. When when we say they are worthy, and we cast our crowns in His feet. Yeah, yeah, because He is worthy. Now, uh, how how does the, let's talk about let's assume that this is the Antichrist. Okay, so he comes out. Uh, it, it's possible that. It's possible that between the rapture of the church and the surfacing of the Antichrist, that there are days, weeks, months, maybe even years have passed. Now we, we think that that due to the confusion of all the people being gone, that the world's going to be in such a turmoil that nobody will know what to do or anything. And, and there's going to be stock market crashes and plane crashes and car crashes and computer crashes and, and uh, all kinds of things. And, and that, this, that there's going to be a need for someone to kind of raise up and bring some sort of order and stuff. Uh, what did I call him in this book? The, the, the Prince to come the, or in this writing here, the one chapter out of the book. Uh, the prince to come. Uh, Satan, what he is is Satan Superman. So wh what's going to happen is, is, is that he's going to raise up, Satan's going to give him his power, and, uh, and the world's going to welcome him as the solution, the Savior. And they're going to, and that's why, in my opinion, just my opinion, that's why there's no arrows with his bow. He doesn't need any. He takes over the world out of a chaos and confusion, and, and they just exalt him and say, Ooh, man, if you can fix this, you are the man. You are the man. I agree with that. I yeah. Agree. And they exalt him because of his uh, expertise, his canavery, his skill in communication. You know, uh, it's kind of like... Uh, uh, the Kardashians are famous for not being famous. I mean, they're just, you know, there's nothing there, but yet they're they're exalted, and so and this is he. He just brings order out of chaos, mm -hmm. and he makes peace with the nation of Israel. Now, can we see? Can we see the nation of Israel today being backed into a corner, so to speak? And all the world ganging up on them. Even our country now is kind of backing away from them a little bit. And they're kind of going to be, they're kind of going to be hurting. You know, and you can kind of see how, even today, you can see how the world's setting up for, for this to take place. And Israel needs an ally bad. They've got God. So don't right. you forget that. Right. <laughs> and they're going to win in the end. Oh, yeah. But they still got some stuff to go through because this tribulation period is to purge out a people for God. Mm. Because the Son, God the Father, because the Son will have His bride, we go into rapture. Amen. But God's people have not been purged out yet. And that's what the tribulation period is for, to purge out a people of God. That's what the 144,000 witnesses. Brother don't you think... Uh, America has been blessed more than any country in the world. In history. In history. Yeah, in history. That's right. Yeah. Now, don't you think, and, and a lot of people say, well, that's because we, we're so close to God. That's not true. Right. It's because God told Abraham, I'll bless those who bless you and I'll curse those who curse right. you. We have taken Israel under our wing mm -hmm. and protected her and helped her that's why God is best in America. Yeah. He says, I'll bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. That's why God is best in America. And God will do that because God's as right. good as His Word. And that's what, right. that's what that series that I'm starting Sunday morning is going to be about the blessings of God and getting the blessings of God. Uh, but you're exactly right. I, I have no doubt about it in my mind because God will, God will do that. I mean, look at the uh, Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. You know, when the Philistines got it 
And God punished them and they gave it back. And everywhere it rested, God blessed. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. And, uh, and I believe you're right, Brother Don. And I think uh, uh, that we'll be, uh, if we don't, when we stop, when we finally, when our leader finally denies allegiance right. to Israel, it's going to be on. Yeah. 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 It's going to be tough. That's exactly yeah. So the world's going to exalt him because he's going to straighten everything out. And, uh, and, then, and then he'll be given this power and this authority and everything, and he's going to make a covenant. He goes forth conquering and to conquer. He goes forth conquering, and he conquers the whole world, and he takes it. He doesn't need any arrows with his bow. <coughs> and this is my interpretation, and there are others. If you think it's Christ, then if you think it's Christ, let's ride that horse a little bit. If we think it's Christ, then we know that Christ is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And if it is Christ, if it might be Christ that's on that horse, then it does the white, does speak of his righteousness. The crown does speak of, his, speak of his authority and his power and his glory and his honor that he's worthy. And it does speak of the fact that he went forth conquering and to conquer. So ultimately he is the conqueror and he wins. He he, he defeats all enemies, and when the war, when it's all over, Christ is exalted on the throne, and every knee about bow, and every tongue will confess that, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the Amen. glory of God the Father. So, it's okay if you want to believe it's Christ. I think it's probably not. But if you want to believe it is, it's fine, because it's true. He, he is conquering, and he is the conqueror, and by the way, when he comes back to the battle of Armageddon, he doesn't need any arrows in his bow. The only thing he has is the word of his mouth. Amen. And he slays with a word. Just a word. He brought all this into existence with just a word. He can end it with just a word. Don't you think when he comes back with the church, you've been there, I'm sure, I know you have, there's a mountain over there that... Uh, they carried, the, the cities would be destroyed, and they carried dirt and leveled it up, and they built another city. And there's a. Uh, uh, You're talking about the ghetto. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I made one, I made the city. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm wondering where you're going with it. Yeah. Well, that's where the battle would be falling. Yeah, well, and, and, and I believe. To the horses. Uh, Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, how many how many thousand I know I, 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 I know the legal yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that's where the blood runs to the horses of the right. Through through the valley of the ghetto, the valley of right. Jazz Real. Right. Yeah. And you 200 can mile long and two hundred mile long. And twenty mile wide. Oh, yeah. And the and the nation of Israel now has uh, air air force bases underneath the ground there. Yeah. Barbara and I were standing on Mount Carmel one day up there looking and, and uh, just looking out over that great valley that's going to be flooded. And there's been so many battles fought in that valley already. That they say the, the soil is so rich in that valley by the, because of the blood of the slain that's been slain in that valley. Millions of people have been slain in that valley. And there's a little old creek that runs down through there. A little old creek that uh, Elijah took the prophets of Baal down there and killed them. That little old creek still running down through there. But anyhow... Uh, we're standing up there one day on top of Mount Carmel uh, 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 watching and we're looking out over this great valley and all of a sudden right out of the ground right out of the ground just looking you couldn't see a thing I mean just green valley out through there and right out of the ground here come, come, come two jet planes shoot, right straight up in the air two air, Israeli jet fighters their, uh, their air force bases are underground in that valley so it's an interesting it's an interesting place but now when he comes back and that battle takes, that battle takes place, uh, he won't have a sword and he doesn't need one. Right. You know, because he'll speak. The Bible says that the sword of his mouth just his word. So we serve a powerful God. The God to be feared and the God to be honored and respected. So whether it's, the, whether it's the Antichrist, which is, what do you think it is, Brother Gray? You're the one who started this mess. <laughs> And then he said you're about to get stuff started and back off and watch it play out. <laughs> what do you, who do you think it is? Who do you think this white, the horse, the rider on the white horse is? The Antichrist? Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> Whichever one it is, uh, I, I, I think B 
biblically we have some basis for it. So uh, I think it, uh, either way, either way we're good. Okay. <laughs> now, anything else? Any other comments on the horse or the rider? So he's going for it to conquer, and he conquers. He does conquer. Does the Antichrist conquer? He's the ruler of the world until it's all over at the end of the seven years tribulation period. And, uh, but would it not have called him out if that's what it was? I mean, I, if that was the Antichrist, I can't imagine him not saying that's the Antichrist right now or whatever. I mean, or making it more obvious. I don't. But with the same token, if it was Christ, wouldn't you have said, Thank you, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. It would have been, been a lot easier if he had done it, wouldn't it? It's a rider. I mean. Well, he said he'd come. Well, go ahead. No, that's all right. He said he's coming to conquer. You know, you don't have to have a gun to conquer somebody. <laughs> now, whoever runs for president, president now, uh, they're going to conquer the people by the mass. They're going to get That's people, true. That's a good point, Brother Don. They're going to get people to believe it. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna vote for him, so they've won. They've won the battle, and the same thing here. He don't need no but Jesus. He don't need no but I mean no Arab. <laughs> because if he's gonna conquer the people, conquer. because it's gonna be a short period of peace. He says, uh, it says it's gonna be a short period of peace. Yeah, yeah. There will be three and a half years, and that that'll, that'll finish this. That'll finish this up now. You can conquer with just a gesture. Barbara conquers me just by. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's all I know. Three and a half years is going to make a covenant with Israel. Probably during this time, Israel will get to move back to Palestine in full power. If the Dome of the Rock is not out of the way, it will be moved out of the way by the Antichrist. They'll build their temple back. And they'll start their sacrifices and everything back. The nation of Israel will be once again the, pre the premier nation on the face of the earth. Right. The Antichrist. Are going to be buddy buddy. Little does Israel know, bless her sweethearts, that in three and a half years, their best friend, they thought, mm -hmm. Antichrist, is going to set up his throne in the Holy of Holies in the temple and proclaim himself God and demand that everyone worship him and take his mark or else they're killed. That's right. So that peace is short lived. Three and a half years. But there's nobody going to take the land. Now they're going to suffer. They're going to, they're going to suffer. But Israel is here to say. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought about that the other day, and I'm thrilled because our time's up. But, but I thought about that the other day. Of all these nations that have been in history, and you read those of you that read, read your ancient history, European history, uh, modern history, and things, all these nations that have been, none of them, none of them, read about the biblical nations. None of them are here that were there years and years ago uh, except the nation of Israel. And, and possibly I guess that's the only one. The Jews. They're still the Jews. They're still in the same place. I mean, you know, they've been in and out, but it's still their land. And it's amazing. That country is, that's God's God's eternal. Any other comments? I close with this. Any other comments? I closed with, uh, where my copy didn't get the last page. This is missing a page. Hey. Ah, oh, there it is. On the very back of your page, what a glorious thought. Now, when Christ comes out, Revelation 19, Brother Donald's talking about, he'll have on the two Greek the word for all. All crowns will be on his head. Yeah. In other words, every crown that everyone, all glory and honor belongs to him. And it'll all be on his head. What a glorious thought. And now, if you don't have him as your Lord and Savior and you've not committed your life to him, if you're not sure beyond a shadow of a doubt that you'll go to heaven when you die, then right now, invite Christ into your heart. Amen. Thank him for dying for you on Calvary. Then you'll be able to join the four beast and the four and twenty elders saying, Praise to him who liveth. Forever and ever. Any other comments? Go to I'm a hush. No, I'm going to hear you as a man. Don't you think that I don't believe the children of God to come back on the Bible in the 19th chapter? 
I don't think they're going to fight in that battle. I think God is bad. He's going to put the word. Don't you think that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're not going to fight. Now, we'll, the word will go out of his mouth, and we will. You know, I, I'll tell you, this is what I think. That's just what I think. This may be a romantic thought, you know, whatever. But I'm thinking that we'll set up on, on, the, on the valley, up, 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 up on the hill of Megiddo, up there where Solomon had his stables and David had his stables, and where that civilization has been stacked up, 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 up. I think we'll set up there on that hill. Maybe on over Mount Hermon on the other side yeah. of the valley, up on Mount Carmel, and just that we, the host of heaven, will just sit there and watch our our hero, I that. our hero Christ, Amen. march down through that valley and slay the enemies of God. That's that what sounds. Right. Oh, son, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm telling you, it is. Now it is. That's shouting gun, buddy. And, I, and our king, our king, Amen. our Amen. king will slay our enemies. That old devil that's caused us all the trouble. Mm. And thing, he's <laughs> going to slay him with the word of his mouth. The sword of his mouth. <coughs> and you know, what a day that will be when my Jesus I yes, Amen. And I look upon his face. Amen. That's going to be a day. Praise his name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Oh, that's good stuff. Oh, that's good stuff. <laughs> all right, let's all stand. And pro, uh, 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 choir practice, choir practice. And may I say that choir is just doing fantastic. Thank you. All of you that are in the choir, you just blessing my heart. And 